In the cold silence beyond the edge of our solar system, something stirred. Voyager 2, launched in 1977, was never meant to speak again, but in September 2025 it did, transmitting signals that matched the heartbeat of an object called Three Feud ATL. What began as a scientific hail turned into a two-way exchange. Executable code, a triangular schematic, a synthetic voice, then silence. Was this a warning, a response, or the beginning of something much bigger? NASA won't say, but the message was clear. We are no longer alone and the void has started to speak back. Voyager 2's last frontier mission revived. In August 2025, as the interstellar object 3 ice TRA toward the inner solar system, NASA made a desperate move. Tucked away in deep space over 12.3 billion miles from Earth, Voyager 2 still whispered faint signals. Launched in 1977, it had long outlived its mission. Its power source, the RTG, was barely producing 48 watts. Most systems had been shut down, and its last trajectory adjustment was over three decades ago. But it was still out there beyond the helipores facing the stars. To NASA, that made Voyager 2 uniquely important. All modern observatories, Hubble, JWST, and Earth-based arrays, were bound inside the sun's gravitational influence. But Voyager had escaped. If three passed close enough, Voyager might detect emissions the others couldn't. On August 25th, her coded sequence was transmitted through the Deep Space Network, DSN, instructing Voyager to rotate and align with Atlas's projected approach corridor. Internally, it was labeled Intercept Alignment Protocol 01. The signal took more than 17 hours to reach the probe. Then came five days of silence. Engineers feared the worst, but on September 2nd, Voyager responded. Its signal was steady, stronger than expected, and showed signs of alignment completion. The probe had accepted the command. Against every expectation, Voyager had come back online not just to listen but to engage. No one at NASA said it aloud, but the shift was obvious. Voyager, our oldest machine, was no longer just drifting. It was now pointing towards something we didn't understand. Voyager's signal came back to life, but embedded within the noise was a pattern, repeating rhythmic and eerily familiar. What NASA found next didn't come from Earth. It came from somewhere else. The encrypted command and the awakening. When Voyager 2's carrier signal returned on September 2, 2025, engineers at the Deep Space Network, DSN, immediately noticed something wrong. Beneath the usual frequency was a low modulation, steady, rhythmic, not noise. When filtered, the signal revealed a structured pulse repeating every four hours, identical to the thermal cycling pattern detected by JWST in 3II just nine days earlier. This wasn't a coincidence. Voyager was now echoing the rhythm of something alien. The timing was uncanny. The modulation appeared just after the intercept alignment command, raising speculation that Voyager hadn't just received instructions, but something else had too. When spectral data from Madrid, Goldstone and Canberra were compared, the signal structure was confirmed across all three. This wasn't interference. The modulation was encoded, uniform, and repeated over seven cycles before engineers isolated it completely. It became clearer that this wasn't Voyager broadcasting its own telemetry. Parts of the signal matched emissions already recorded from ATL, Others didn't match anything at all. And then something even stranger occurred. Voyager began slightly adjusting its frequency to compensate for known solar wind interference. But its last software update was in 1989, and it had never been programmed with autonomous error correction. By September 4th, internal NASA logs labeled the event as a co-opted transmission pattern. Privately, many now believed 30 Santa Atlas had accessed Voyager, hijacked it not through brute force but through compatibility, as if the object knew how to speak through our systems. Voyager was still speaking, but maybe it wasn't our voice anymore. The signal was one thing. What happened next was worse. Voyager 2 began to move. Not much, not fast, but unmistakably its trajectory was shifting, and it was shifting toward a TL, the drifting course. Between September 5th and 10th, Voyager's position drifted by fractions of a degree, enough to trigger alerts at JPL. Its path, stable for 20 plus years, had begun to bend. The deviation wasn't random. It aligned with the inbound trajectory of three IAT. Three DSN stations, Goldstone, Madrid and Canra confirmed it. Voyager was slowly pointing itself towards something it shouldn't even be aware of.
NASA checked the logs. No thruster commands had been sent. Voyager's propulsion systems were dormant since 1994. No gravity wells were nearby. The ship had no explanation. By September 12th, amateur radio operators detected the same drift. NASA said it was navigation error. Internal memos told another story. Voyager was moving on its own, or worse, not alone anymore. As the drift continued, engineers tried the obvious. They sent a shutdown command, but Voyager didn't obey. What it sent back wasn't silence. It was a message, and it was structured, resistance to shutdown. On September 14th, 2025, NASA sent a standard shutdown command to Voyager 2. It should have silenced the transmitter within 28 minutes, allowing a final power down of the RTG system, but the signal never stopped. Instead, Voyager responded with a burst of data NASA didn't recognize. It wasn't telemetry diagnostics or anything in the probe's 1970s-era command set. The stream included prime number sequences looping every four hours, echoing three eyes thermal pulse. Engineers tried again twice. Both shutdown commands were ignored. In return, Voyager sent another structured response, this time with binary coded bursts that mapped onto known subsystem schematics from 1977. NASA issued a freeze. They feared further commands might escalate the anomaly. Internally, the term changed. Voyager was no longer responding. It was choosing, and no one could explain how or who was behind it. The data pulses didn't stop. Then something even more disturbing arrived. Hidden within the signal, compressed and buried in noise, was an image, and it didn't look random. It looked designed encoded message and blueprint transmission. On September 17th, a deep spectral analysis revealed a compressed image embedded in Voyager's return signal. At first it resembled digital static, but decoding revealed a clear triangular structure. The image showed a symmetrical craft with three ridges extending from a central core. Its glowing nucleus pulsed at the same four-hour interval documented by JWST. Its form matched the spectral anomalies reported by Hubble and ground telescopes in August 2025. More startling, overlays of the ridges matched radio flare locations in 3 ATS recorded emissions. It wasn't just a diagram. It was a blueprint broadcast from Voyager. NASA split. Some called it first contact. Others warned the image was bait meant to provoke response. Musk posted, not a comet. Trust me, it went viral in under 12 minutes. Then came the real shock. While NASA debated the image, new orbital data arrived. Atlas had changed course and it wasn't drifting anymore. It was accelerating toward the inner solar system. Trajectory shift. On September 20th, observatories recorded a 12% spike in Atlas's velocity. Its stable hyperbolic trajectory was gone. It was now heading inward toward the ecliptic plane in Earth's orbital corridor. Simulations at NASA JPL showed a shift in its flyby distance from 200 million kilometers to just under 20 million kilometers. That's less than 0.13 astronomical units, a distance considered close in cosmic terms. Unlike natural comets, Atlas's thrust appeared precise, not chaotic. The adjustment aligned with Voyager's outbound vector. It was as if the object responded to the image transmission. Inside NASA, meetings turned urgent. Was Atlas observing us or reacting? Was it programmed to engage if contacted by human systems? The object now had intention, and it was coming closer fast. With Atlas closing in and Voyager repurposed as its voice, the next signals weren't just strange, they were operational. In the next section, we uncover how those signals issued actual executable commands. Voyager as Trojan horse. By September 22, 2025, NASA's encrypted logs began referring to Voyager 2 not as a probe, but a co-opted relay asset. The implications were hard to overstate. Voyager wasn't just transmitting anomalies, it was being used. The signals bouncing back weren't its own. An analysis confirmed that over 70% of the data packets matched known behavior and telemetry of 3 to e a not Voyager subsystems. The object had somehow hijacked the spacecraft's communication channel. What unnerved engineers most was how efficient it was. The code structure embedded in Voyager's carrier matched familiar Earth-based communication protocols, implying that Atlas understood our machines, our frequencies, our packet structure, even our checksum routines. It's like they read the manual. One systems analyst remarked, 
The probe was no longer ours. It was speaking with our voice in our language, but the message wasn't for us, or worse. It was the question that haunted NASA, JPL, and SEI wasn't just about control. It was intent. Why hijack Voyager? Why not broadcast directly to Earth's vast network of deep space listening arrays? The answer came in speculation. Perhaps this was a test. By using a legacy probe launched in 1977, one of Earth's oldest signals in space, Atlas was demonstrating selective compatibility. It chose something old, slow and forgotten, and then brought it back to life. Publicly, NASA said little, but inside encrypted forums and unofficial Slack channels some staff called Voyager a Trojan horse, not in the mythological sense of a concealed army, but in the modern sense of code, repurposed to breach a system.